In this video, I'm going to show you guys how to paint a snake. I'm also going to show you a bit of footage of uh, the snake art show that Jen and I put on. It's a wildlife art experience. Now, just busy printing my t-shirts at the moment, but soon I'll be off to the craft fair. If you want to jump straight to how to paint a snake, just look down the bottom of this video. You'll see little chapters. Just jump straight to that chapter and enjoy. But uh, I know some of you guys just like to follow what I'm doing. So this video is for you as well. Video for everyone. Go do all my snake talks and the snake show and all that wearing a mask. Oh well, at least it's on. That's the plus. Jan and I have got a building all to ourselves. Should be pretty cool. Maybe nobody else wants to be in with the snakes. It's all good for me. Okay, for the next couple of days, this is my art studio, a public studio. It is a snake pit, and in that snake pit we have an easel. Two easels, in fact, with a tightrope between for the snakes to play on. And behind the easel you can see Lady Jennifer's in the shop. As we look around the easel, in the morning I have to stick on hot water bottles to warm up the snakes. This is Lady Thyla warming up the hot water bottles, and usually cold at the craft fair. Isn't she cute? And talking of cute, check out this little guy. This guy's Sneaky. And Sneaky there, he's hiding under the blanket near the hot water bottle. Off to the side here, we have a place where we do nature talks. We've got our postcards, we've got our t-shirts, we've got comic books, we've got a lot. Now, a few years back, I drew this very cranky tiger snake. And that pose, which I don't get to see in this pit that much because my snakes are very chilled, that pose is what I'm drawing here. I'm going to start off just painting the black outline shape of the snake. You can do this any way you want. There's no right or wrong way. That's the great thing about snakes. You put them in any angle. Next, I'm going to put the markings on. Just striping it up there because it's a tiger snake. The next stage is to put not quite black but almost black like a grey lot of scales. Now I'm laying these down in a brick pattern. And on the outside the bricks stretch out a bit, on the inside they bunch up a bit, so like this illustration here. If you check out some of my other videos I go into depth on how to very simply draw snake scales. Probably worth having a look at one of those videos. After I've covered the whole body with scales I start working on the head just in like a grey. We haven't got white yet or light grey, it's just grey. I'm sort of marking out roughly where those scales should be. Again, you know, this is not a how to draw snakes, this is how to paint snakes. You can see the grey that I've put on the head there, it's just a little bit lighter than the others. What I'll do is I'll add a bit of light scales to the areas which I think the sun might be shining on this animal. Brighten that up a bit. Or just to give it a little bit of form. You can sort of see where the backbone goes. So not white yet because we're not doing the highlights yet. This is grey. This is still all the underpaint. Now I'm going to lay some yellow here as the belly scales. Again, not a bright yellow, very dull because it's sort of in the shadow. But just to let you know that it's got a very pale belly, even if it is in shadow. And speaking of shadows, this is where the real trick happens. You get some sort of medium, something like a clear gel medium if you're using acrylic paints, just to thin out that paint 
and I make a black by using a bit of burnt umber and Payne's grey mixed together. Then I really water it down a lot with a gel medium. I gently stroke it with a very soft brush and put a shadow under the whole snake. And it's the shadow that really makes this work. While I've got that there, I'm actually going to darken parts of the snake. So parts of the snake is also in shade, so really darkening that up, which throws more emphasis on the lighter bits. This is giving it some form. Next I work on the head again, I'm making it just a little bit more pale. This is more of a pale grey getting closer to white as I'm slowly working towards the light. Give it a bit of brightness in the eyes. And finally, the white highlights. But with these white highlights, I'm defining some of the scales a little bit more. And once we've got that white highlight on, we've got the tongue flickering, we've got the whole works. We're going to do a little bit of dry brushing and dry brushing is where you've almost ran out of paint on your brush and you're kind of rubbing it on certain areas and it gives it almost like a very soft misty effect like the light diffusing on those scales. Make sure those venomous snakes don't bite you while you're trying to paint. It's always uh, a bonus when you don't get bitten and that's pretty much how you paint a snake. Lady Jennifer is right into educating the public about wildlife. So she'll jump in the snake pit as well and talk about snakes. But she's also got these crowned stick insects, which are a great hit with the kids. And of course, her lovely lizards. Okay, before we leave the craft fair, check out these alpacas. Check out the witch noise they make. After an amazing craft fair, it's time to pack up. And it's one of those hard jobs you've done after a few days of on your feet, talking to people, and you're exhausted. And we gotta pack up twice. Not only do we pack up the craft fair stall, we gotta pack up the snake pit as well. 